that I know people use a lot, though, is what we call a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Talk right. a little bit about what that involves. Yep, sure thing. So that's another way that you can get a down payment for a new purchase if you qualify for all the payments. If you've got equity in your current home, you can access that equity through what's called a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. Uh, there are limitations as to how much you can take out in terms of the overall loan to value ratio of the loans that you're taking out. Sometimes it's limited to 80%, but uh, many times up to 90 or 95%. What you can do is access that those uh, funds, uh, the equity in your house, use that as the down payment. And then once you sell your house, you'll pay off the primary mortgage of your current residence and pay off the line of credit on your current residence. So you can actually access the equity uh, prior to you moving out and not have to sell your house to, to gain access to that equity. Now, uh, it, it must be done. You have to do, to apply for the line of credit and, and with you know, theoretically, you have to have it approved and have access to the couch uh, to the ha um, cash prior to the home going on the market. So, if you intend on putting that home on the market, uh, your current residence, a client's current residence, then they will have to get approved for that HELOC and have access to the funds before the listing goes on the market. Any bank that's going to give you a line of credit does not want to. Uh, you don't want to show them that you're going to pay that off immediately. Uh, now, there are certain banks that are catching on to the fact that people are using their current equity essentially as a bridge loan, and they're ch starting to charge points up front. That still is – it's an easier and cheaper way to do it than an actual bridge loan. So I'm, I'm not sure I was clear on the HELOC ac aspect of it, but um, that's, that's, one ex that's one additional – option for a client to use to uh, get a down payment for a new house. Did that make sense? Yeah. What? Why don't we talk just for a minute? Uh, I know what a point is, but somebody listening might not understand exactly what a point is. What, mm -hmm. what amount is a point sure. and why would you pay it and how does it work against uh, getting your interest rate bought down? Absolutely. A, a point or a discount point to be specific are charges that you pay at settlement to buy the rate down. So let's say, for instance, a rate right now is 3.75% for a 30-year fixed with zero points. That means you don't pay any additional discount points for that particular rate. However, if you wanted to buy the rate down to 3.625 points, you might pay a half point. So that would be a half a percent of the loan amount. So if you've got a loan amount of 400000 that would be $2,000. And if you wanted to further reduce it to 3.5%, for instance, the discount point on that might be 1% or $4,000 in this example. Uh, Rates are a little bit crazy right now, so pricing is not quite that simple. We've got a relatively flat uh, yield curve, so you can actually buy the rate down more now for less points than you have been in, in many years. I uh, don't know how long that will last, uh, given when uh, your listeners will hear this, that uh, that option uh, might be gone. But uh, essentially, a discount point is a, a, a way to pay future interest on that loan and and buy the rate down does that make so sense the, yeah sure and then if you have a, a recessionary time or an inflationary time and crazy rates going up i remember i mean first house i ever bought we got 10 percent interest and we thought that was great because it had been 17 percent just right. before then so um you know it's it's a long-term insurance policy so to speak to protect you so that you don't worry about rates going up or having to refinance down the road and paying more money. So it is it is something to consider, and it is a way to buy down even a 5% interest rate back down to 3.75 or 3.5 or whatever. It depends on how much money you want to spend up front to do that. But well, I, I, just locked a, I just locked a VA loan at 2.875 with 1.375 points. Uh, now, rates have moved rate. a little bit since then, and we caught it at the exact moment, but uh, that's the kind of thing that you can do. And that's why we have people like you to work those numbers for us, John. Right. So right. what about just getting us a mortgage, just a regular mortgage and doing it that mm -hmm. way? Talk sure thing. That. 
Yeah, uh, other options if you're going to purchase a, a house before selling, you're going to need a small down payment regardless. You know, there's no such thing as 100% uh, anymore with, with the exception of some uh, uh, housing authority programs that might be out there and that we do carry. Uh, but you can go into a, a home purchase with a single mortgage. Uh, so let's say you have enough cash for a small down payment, even 5% or so, you can uh, purchase the house using that down payment. Once you sell your house, then you can, you can use a large principal curtailment. In other words, if you, let's say you get $50,000 from the sale of your house, you can make a one-time payment to the bank and or servicer of the loan and it, work with them for to call that a principal curtailment and then they will actually recast the loan so in other words if you've got a $400,000 loan initially and you put down a $50,000 or make a $50,000 principal curtailment then you'll recast it so all of the interest and payments are based on that $350,000 number that is your your new current uh, your new current principal balance. Now there are a few guidelines that have to be followed for that, but that is a great way. I had somebody do that a month ago. That's a great way to make a purchase, then use the equity to buy down the or to pay down the mortgage to where they would have originally liked to have had it if they had been able to sell their house initially. That's good. That's a good way. Good way of thinking about it. Absolutely. So. I know it used to be more popular with uh, first and second mortgages and wraparound mortgages back when yeah. it was ridiculous. But, um, you know, bridge loans, I understand, are probably the most costly and time consuming. Is that still the case? Absolutely. Yeah. Not only are they more costly and time consuming, but they're limited to 80 percent or less uh, loan to value on your current house. So you're not going to be able to access as much equity as you could for a HELOC, for example. Uh, we don't we don't sell those anymore uh, just based on the fact that there are other options available that are typically much, uh, much cheaper to do and, and much less time consuming. Very true. Well, we're getting close to the end, but there's a few more things I really want to cover with you. But uh, just tell tell the listeners about if they can't qualify on their debt and the existing home has to be sold and they just don't have enough, you know, they, the numbers don't work right. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, market conditions really dictate what yeah. you can do in that case. Uh, I I always recommend that an agent, given the market that we're in right now, which is a seller's market, Try and take in contracts with home of choice contingencies. That will allow the seller to sell their home and then look for a home that might suit their needs within a limited period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and be able to to, to find and, and supply a contract. And the the thing about that is that they can then submit a contract with the knowledge and the contingencies reduced from sale of home and settlement to just settlement of their current res or current residence because uh, that's obviously a lot more favorable than having to go through the entire process of selling and settling their their current house. Obviously, they could uh, you know do a rent back as well. Uh, so if they sold their house. Uh, and then rent it back, uh, giving them time to finalize a purchase. That's another choice. And uh, worst case scenario, they can sell their house and move into another temporary um, uh, place of residence, you know, family, friends, hotel, anything like that. Until Airbnb. They can find a new house. Airbnb, I mean, exactly. Airbnb. Some of these Airbnb houses are pretty darn nice, I'll tell you. Yeah, for sure. Yep. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately, but I really appreciate your having come. Um, talk about uh, one other thing, though, that I think is interesting. I have a number of people who stay in their home, and then while they're living in that home, they buy a place, a second home at the beach, and then they'll eventually want to retire there. Yep. And then that, that's the same concept of moving out of the house and getting it ready, but you have another place already, and that kind of also seems like an easier way to do it. So just talk for right. a minute if you have any scenarios about that. Well, you know, I do. In fact, I just had a client last month 
close on a home, oddly enough, in Northern Virginia that they are going to uh, move into as a permanent residence. They still live and work in New Jersey, but they like the D.C. area, and they have a lot of friends and actually have some business associates here in the area. So they decided to buy a home here in this area that they intend on moving into as a permanent residence three years down the road when they retire. You can do the same thing with a, a beach house or a mountain house or anything like that. Find a home that you want to retire to, make a purchase of that home in anticipation of using that as a primary residence down the road. Well, Don, you have been a wonderful resource of information, wealth of information for the listeners today. But just in case someone needs to contact you to ask a specific question about their particular situation, what's the best way for them to reach you on uh, email or whatever? Yeah, I'd say probably email. My email address is don.fritchie at yahoo.com. It's D-O-N dot F as in Frank, R-U-T-C-H-E-Y at yahoo.com. At Yahoo. We'll, we'll give a Yahoo shout and thanks so Woo-hoo. much. <laughs> well, we go buy a house. <laughs> Right. At any rate, if you have anybody um, out there who's still interested in selling their home, you can email me at move or improve with Debbie at gmail.com. And thanks to everyone who stopped by to listen today and uh, be sure to tune in to other podcasts on how to figure out what place to move to when you want to move. And thanks, Don, for being with me today. And I appreciate it very much. My pleasure, Debbie. Thanks for having me. Okay.